Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our 2020 Winter Games Snowshoeing Pre-Competition Webinar. This is Zach Cintron. Um, we also have Ron Freeman, who will be on the line with us tonight. Um, and we also have Steve Bennett with us. Um, first thing I'd like to cover, since we are switching over to Zoom here, and not everybody has used it before, is finding the hands up section like we used to have in GoToWebinar if you want to open your line for a question. Um, and then the, the question area where you can type something in to ask a question. The main toolbar for Zoom everybody will have kind of goes and disappears on you at times, but you can always retrieve it by hovering over it. Um, it'll always be at either the top of your screen or at the bottom of your screen, um, depends on what your preference is. If you are looking for the hands up button, if you click on manage participants or maybe it just says participants for you, it looks like two little people. Um, when you are in that little screen, there is a circle with three dots in it that says more. And in there, there's a little blue hand. Um, you can use that to raise your hand. Um, I know it says that it's a clap, but we use it as the hand raising for this again. Um, if you are interested in typing in a question for people to read and then us to say on the webinar, um, you can go back to your toolbar under the more section. Uh, the first option is the chat, and the chat works the same as the questions did in GoToWebinar. Um, in there, you can either type it to everyone, you can type it directly to Steve or myself um, or Ron, um, but if you type it to everyone, everyone will see it. Um, so if you think it's a question that other people may have, that's probably the best way to go. Moving forward here, um, this is the agenda for tonight. I know there looks like there's a lot of bullet points on there. Um, we'll get through this pretty quickly. Uh, we do have a cutoff time of 7.50 because the HOD Webinar 2 is right behind us tonight, so we're going to keep moving along here. Um, the competition team hasn't changed. Um, Ron Freeman, Trish Miles, Melissa Powers, Dave Gill, Kim McLaughlin, all the same people that are leading the venue. Um, so if you're on site and you have any questions, of course, find one of them or grab myself and we will answer it for you. Uh, here's the schedule right now for, for Sunday. Um, this is the game plan that we're going into. Um, it, time trials is set up the same way that it was last year. There's nothing different here. It should look exactly the same to you. The only difference is it, is it got bumped back about an hour and change. Um, we recognized last year that there was a little bit of a gap, especially more for the alpine skiers, um, going into Sunday with uh, opening ceremonies and dinner and stuff like that. So we tried to condense down a little bit to keep people from sitting around too much. Um, so again, our warm-ups will start about two o'clock. So we would highly recommend that you're here having lunch and ready to go way before two o'clock. Um, so, you know, if 1230 may be the latest time that you're shooting for to get on site at Whitetail, sit down, have lunch and get ready. Um, but two to 2.30 we'll start warm-ups and right at 2.45, we are kicking things off for the 400 meter plus time trials. Um, we, if we can do it a little bit earlier than that at 2.30, 2.15, um, if everybody's there and ready to go, we may kick off then. Um, and again, the 400 meter time trial is a reminder. We run that 400 meter to get times for the 400, 800, 1600, and the 4x4. Four four. Um, I don't believe there's any 4x4 four four entries this year. Um, then we move to the shorter distance, the 2550s. Uh, we run a 50 meter time trial for both of those. And then we run into that 100, 200 meter where we run 100 for the remaining races. Um, I will make a note for Sunday. Um, if the weather changes when it comes to Sunday and we lose the operations building like we have a little bit with the ONSO trainings, there is a plan B. And the plan B is to move time trials into Monday morning um, since we always have an afternoon start for snowshoeing anyway on Monday. Um, no need to get too far into that. Right now, we're still on plan A. If we have to move to plan B, we will let you know as soon as possible. Um, going into the Monday schedule right now, again, the morning is relatively open for snowshoers because we're setting up the course because we got to move from the operations building to the tubing park. Um, so we do that in the morning. Uh, it's a good opportunity to see some of your fellow alpine skiers if you'd like to. Um, reminder, though, if you do want to go see your alpine skiers, you do need to get a walking pass to do so. Um, lunch is served at 11 to 11.45, um, so be there right away for lunch for snowshoers. And then 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock, 
we'll start snowshoe competition. Um, so again, when lunch opens at 11 o'clock on Monday, be there ready to start eating at 11 o'clock so you can move on by 11.30, worst case scenario, 11.45 to get over to the snowshoeing venue. Um, you will be able to catch a bus from the front of the lodge and take a shuttle over to the venue. Um, and then awards are rolling as we go throughout the day. Everybody knows that that's going to stay the same. Um, we, we will do a quick coaches meeting um, after the first day about 4.15. Um, if it's not needed, we will tell you. Um, additionally, I, I did miss on Sunday that we will do a, a short coaches meeting after um, time trials as well. Uh, just to update you with anything that you need to know going into Monday. Uh, dinner runs from 5.30 to 6.45. And remember, dinner on Monday is at the Ramada Plaza, and that is part of the uh, the Monday evening festivities, dinner, the athlete social and dance follows after that. Um, additionally, there is the family reception at the Homewood Suites, which is right across the street from the Ramada Plaza. Tuesday. Tuesday's our, our morning one. Um, uh, John, I'll follow up on your question as we, we move along through here. Once we hit the dance section again, um, I'll answer your quick question. Um, but that's a good question for folks to know. Um, Tuesday uh, has the normal breakfast at the hotel. Uh, delegation registration is at 8 o'clock to get things rolling again. Snowshoeing competition will start promptly at 9.15. We want everybody there no later than 9, um, so we can roll right away. And that'll roll till about 12:30, 1 o'clock. Um, and then lunch is after everyone has completed competition and everybody has been awarded. You can go to lunch, and then from there, you're on your way home. Um, actually, John, I'll, I'll answer your question really quick here. Um, if athletes are not staying in the motel, do they need to? What do they need to get into the dance or the social? Uh, the, this is Steve uh, for. Uh access to the dance dinner social whatever the athletes must be wearing their credentials that's not just athletes that's any official delegation member we're not necessarily doing any tickets but they must have their credential that'll be in your coaches packets um, again that's for coaches athletes partners uh, chaperones anybody that's officially part of your delegation perfect hopefully that answers your question john um, here's the detailed schedule. We won't get too deep into this either. Um, Monday for finals here. Um, I may have skipped one. Nope, Monday. Uh, Monday for finals here. This is the, the game plan for the order of events. Um, again, this is the same as we did last year as well. Uh, we didn't look to change anything for this one. Um, again, the only reason the order of events here will get changed for Monday or Tuesday here. Um, is if we have a weather situation that pushes time trials to um, Monday, there's a chance that a Monday event or two may get bumped to Tuesday. Um, but looking at the schedule, that may not even be the case either. We should be able to get a full time trials morning in and then just go right on with our schedule as planned. Hey, Zach. Yep. Um, you, may be, you may mention this in a minute or two or a couple of slides. If we do have to go to plan B, and I don't want to get into too much uh, into the weeds on that, um, mm -hmm. time trials will not be at operations building. The time trials will be over at the tubing park. That is correct. Yep. So if, if we need to go to plan B, we will notify everybody and we'll notify them with the details. But the, the minor details are um, it'll go just to Monday, Tuesday, and it'll all be at the tubing park. That is correct, Ron. Um, here's the, the overall view for Whitetail. I, I think the only real change, and Steve can correct me if I'm wrong, is that family hospitality has been moved from the location in the solstice room, and it has been moved over to the coffee shop area right before you get to the cafeteria area. Um, so if you are looking for family hospitality, that is the only change from last year, and it'll be right at the coffee shop by the um, rest of the food area. Yeah, it's so basically, if you look at this slide, if you're walking up the stairs there in the very middle, heading to the main lodge, it's right immediately to your left. That's also where merchandise sales will be, and those will only be open on Monday and Tuesday. All right, snowshoeing venue overview. Again, nothing has really changed. The only thing that will change here is if you see that little red star um, right to the right of the tubing lodge, we are going to bring back our 20 by 40 tent that we've had in the past. Um, we couldn't put it up last year because everybody remembers the crazy wind. 
Um, but we are going to bring that back this year. And so in the tent between the tubing lodge where we had awards last year and the competition area, that tent will now have pre-staging for competition and will have awards as well. So what that means for the tubing lodge is that the tubing lodge will be nothing but space for athletes and programs to sit down and relax, be, be warm, be inside if they need to be, um, and have access to uh, the snack bar area. Um, another small note for everybody with the snack bar area this year is along with the drinks and snacks and chips and stuff like that that they offered last year, um, there will be what I will say is minor lunch options there. Um, it won't be what's up at the main lodge, obviously, but they are planning to offer small things like hot dogs, maybe pizza and that kind of stuff, concession stand type of food. Um, if lunch for a family or parent or spectator wants to be purchased there, um, Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, the lunch tickets that you will be getting for your athletes so still needs to be used at the main cafeteria in the main lodge. Correct. All right. Um, Ron, any updates for you other than that for the venue? Yeah, just one thing. Um, so the fact that we're now going to have a, um, a tent where we're going to be doing our pre-staging, we're not going to be staffing the, the lodge for, you know, if your athletes are up there, um, you know, there may be somebody up there with a radio, but chances are they won't. So it'll be up to you to make sure your athlete is ready to go in the, in the tent. Um, if you're relaxing, either getting warm or, or uh, uh, getting hydrated or whatever up in the lodge, it's your responsibility to be ready to go in the pre-staging area. Great note, Ron. Thanks for filling that in there as well. Um, again, you've seen this snowshoeing venue map as well. Um, nothing's going to change here, except I added that little red star again in the same location. Um, I feel like this map makes it seem a little bit far compared to where it will actually be. Um, but the nice thing with adding that tent for pre-staging and awards mm -hmm. is that the loop that the athletes have to do to go from one to the other to the next is a lot shorter. Um, which should help our flow, and we should run into um, less issues with people having to be pulled potentially from awards to go back out and run another event. All right, so um, snowshoeing families and spectators, we're not going to read through all of this. Um, again, this, this is the same as it was last year. Spectators will have a spectator area, and it'll be more defined this year because, again, we couldn't put a lot of stuff up because of the crazy winds last year. Um, so the competition area is obviously the loop on the snow there. Um, there will be a section on the snow that uh, spectators and families can also be on. Um, and again, we're asking spectators and families to stay out of the um, pavilion where we stage for snowshoeing as much as possible. Um, we will try to leave a section of seating in that area for them as well. Um, again, a reminder for spectators that want to go and watch Alpine, if you're going to go watch Alpine and go onto the snow that's connected anywhere to any of the trails coming off the mountain, you do need a, a spectator walking pass um, that we can take care of at the uh, control center and or I think they will also have them um, for available. Yeah, walking passes, we'll have them in the control center and on Monday and Tuesday, we will have them in the family services area at the coffee shop. So again, when you're, you're walking up the stairs there, hook a left, um, and you can get spectator passes there. Um, one big note as a reminder for every year is the parking for um, snowshoeing. In the past for the operations building for on snow events, we've allowed folks to park over by the operations building. But when it comes to winter games weekend, including time trials on Sunday, um, you cannot park over at the operations building. Um, so park in the parking lot closest to it, and it's roughly uh, maybe a 100-meter, 150-meter walk over to it. It's not too bad. Um, and then when it comes to Monday and Tuesday, you can park in the normal tubing park parking, which is much closer. And with that, you know, depending on the space availability in the general parking areas over in that area, um, you can park in the main parking areas, and there is a shuttle that will be running right at the entrance of the uh, main lodge as you're walking up the steps. But typically the pickup is by they have a little maintenance station um, as you go back to the handicap parking areas right up by the main lodge. 
And then right in front of the main lodge in the little loop, that's where the drop off is. We had a lot of confusion last year. So the pickups right by the little man station and uh, just want to make sure everyone's available that that is a, a service that's available. All right, warm ups and training. Um, again, delegations are welcome to warm up in the competition areas. Uh, so operations building on the back end there for Sunday and then the tubing area for Monday and Tuesday. Um, if the snowshoe and games management team is working on setting up the course still and trying to get stuff done, um, if they ask you to move one way or another or, or vacate an area that they're working on, if you could please do so, we'd really appreciate that. Um, the quicker we can get the course set up and make any um, additions and details and changes that we need to make, the quicker we get to competition and races. Um, and if for some reason, I don't think we really run into this too much, definitely not a tubing park. There may be a chance on the upper part of um, the operations build, building area um, near Fallmount where um, alpine skiers come down that trail sometimes. Um, be mindful of other participants of, uh, and even folks that are coming down the mountain um, as your athletes are warming up, and also share the, the training space with other snowshoeing programs as well. Um, for staging and athlete pickup, um, again, everything for time trials of the operations building, it all happens out of the maintenance bays that we have open. Um, so we will work out of there. We'll have chairs on the snow for athletes to put on snowshoes if need be. Um, you know, we don't want them putting on their snowshoes indoors. Um, and that also goes for when we move down to the competition area on the tubing park. If they're in the pavilion, we don't want them putting their snowshoes on in the pavilion, so we'll have chairs on the snow for them to do so. Um, again, we're, our goal coming out of Sunday, out of time trials, and then going into uh, Monday, Tuesday, is to have divisions and staging times um, primarily posted the evening before on the coach resource page. Uh, that'll be the quickest place for you to find them. Uh, we will definitely have the physical copies ready for you each morning, um, but I know a few people really mentioned that they liked having access to the digital copies the night before so they could get a little planning done ahead of time. Um, and then, again, coaches will be allowed in the staging area uh, for both uh, time trials and uh, championships to help get snowshoes on for their athletes. Um, we know that makes things a lot quicker for us, and it makes it a lot easier on your athletes. Um, but, again, just like when we were setting up, if, if a management team member – um, need you to step out of the way or something. If you've already put on your athlete's snowshoes, please take a step out of the way so they can operate as well and they can help your athletes get set up. Um, after athletes finish their awards, they will need to be picked up at the awards area in the tent as well. Um, we will have escorts from the competition venue taking divisions of athletes up to the tent to be awarded. Um, but after that, they will need to be picked up by a coach at the awards area in that tent. Um, again, uh, awards are presented as each divi division finishes. We don't do an all-at-the-end kind of thing. It'll be in the tent that we're putting up at the tubing park. Um, again, if you can get your athletes, we're going to try to get athletes snowshoes off as they finish the races as well, um, like we did last year before we take them up to the tent, um, because the tent area if I remember correctly, is all gravel. Um, I don't think grass runs up that far. Maybe it's a little half and half at best. Um, but we don't want them wearing snowshoes up through the, the gravel areas. One, because it's not safe. Two, it'll chew up their snowshoes, and we don't want that to happen as well. Um, again, just like any other racing-oriented type of sport, whether it be snowshoeing, swimming, track and field, whatever it may be, if you have an athlete that's at the award ceremony but needs to run their next event, um, we will get them from the award ceremony um, back down to the competition area to run that event, and then they'll be fully awarded with full honors at the uh, uh, next opportunity that they have when they end up back in the awards tent. Um, if you have a question on that or if it's running close for one of your athletes, um, also please check in with the folks at awards and just let them know politely that, hey, I have an athlete that's coming up for another event that they need to go to. May I please borrow them, and they'll come back for awards as well. Um, if you say that, please communicate it with a games management member at awards, and don't just pull your athlete out of nowhere, uh, because then we have awards looking for athletes that aren't there that are doing what they need to do, but awards has no clue about that. So 
again, as long as we all keep communicating throughout the weekend, we'll have a really good time. Um, uh, for awards, we're going to post awards. My game plan right now, um, which is subject to change, I will say, is the game plan is to post results uh, with the paperwork in the lodge. Um, I definitely have to double take, uh, double check the, the tent for the size of it. I worry about posting results in there and it being too congested. Um, and if everybody's just enjoying themselves up at the lodge anyway, there may be a, a more appropriate area on a wall there to post those as well. Um, so I will update you in the, the time trials coaches meeting on where the awards will be, uh, or not the awards, the results will be posted um, at the, the convenience of your coaches, athletes, and spectators for parents. Um, Ron, do you want to pick up here with some rules? Sure. Uh, um, the rules uh, for 2020 are there are no changes from previous, uh, previous years. In terms of um, sizes of your snowshoes, Really, if, if you have a question, let's take care of the question at time trials, not at the games. You're subject to disqualification if you haven't, um, if you haven't brought uh, your snowshoe requests to us prior to the actual games themselves. Um, there should be no issue. I know we have some younger um, athletes this year. So bring them to, to myself, to Zach, um, to Trish, or, or to Melissa, um, so we can look, look at those on, at time trials, not at the, at the um, competitions themselves. Okay, next slide. Um, we've, we've seen the schedule earlier, um, no changes this year um, uh, to, the, to, the, um, to the events that are offered. Once again, we are offering the coaches race. I forget, um, Zach, was that uh, Tuesday afternoon? I can't even remember whether we're gonna to try to do that as the last event on Tuesday or that, um, was that on Monday? I, I don't remember. I think it's currently scheduled for the very end of Monday, um, but I think if, if we run into a weather situation or something, we may push it to Tuesday, um, but I think it'd be really fun to offer at the end of the day Monday. Yeah, so that will be coaches and SOMD staff, of course. Um, okay, next slide. Um, no changes here. Athletes may compete in up to three individual events and up to two relays, as long as the two, re two relays are, are on two separate days, so we're offering the four by two on Monday and the four by one on Tuesday. Okay, next slide. So uh, for your athlete to be eligible to run a relay, they must be entered in um, a hundred, at least a hundred meter event. Um, if you have an athlete who is running 25 meters, they're not eligible to, to run a relay. If they're on, entered in a 50, they must also run 100. And I'm not sure if that's on this slide, that's probably on another slide. Um, here we're talking about the 500, uh, 800 meter unified race. Um, we've offered this both here and, and at long distance running the last four or five years. If you have, um, if you're in this race, you need to um, be within five meters of your partner, be it athlete or partner. Um, if you're not, um, you're subject to disqualification. Um, no pushing or pulling or um, uh, as part of this event as well. Okay, next slide. Four, um, races longer than 100 meters. We'll do mass start. We'll have lanes for 25, 50, and 100 meter. Um, all of those races, um, the 25, 50, and 100 will be on the near side of the track. Um, so there, um, we'll have straightaways um, lined up. Um, with lane lines for, for those three races. Anything longer than that will um, constitute a loop. Uh, races longer than the 100 meter will do a waterfall start to equalize the, the distance run for the people on the outside. Two command start, as we've done um, every year, racers ready and go. We'll also have um, a flag, um, uh, the, the red and white flag for, um, for those who are um, have some um, hearing impairment. Okay, next slide. Two false starts equal uh, disqualification. Um, we are mindful of weather conditions, whether it's wind or other issues. Um, our starter is, you know, we'll use common sense, um, but if an athlete is false starting clearly more than two times, that athlete is subject to disqualification. Next slide. 
on the course, only athletes, officials, and partners on the course. Uh, the two-minute rule, an athlete must progress at least 20 meters every two minutes in any race longer than 100 meters. Um, and I think that applies for any race um, shorter than 100 meters as well, but um, we don't say that specifically. I, I can't remember how we judged that in the past, Zach. Um, generally, this is not an issue, um, but um, keep in mind an athlete needs to progress at least 20 meters every two minutes. Um, if, if, you know, some of our athletes, you know, for whatever reason, um, either noise or, or, or weather conditions, just stops and does not progress at all, um, we will probably, um, that will be, that athlete will be subject to disqualification as well. Uh, the lo lowest bullet, well, it's actually not a bullet, but um, the lowest uh, sentence down there, an athlete may not progress more than three meters without both shoes attached to their feet. What that means is, you know, no shuffling along with an unattached shoe, uh, snowshoe to the bottom of the feet. They need to be attached. So make sure in the staging area you've got those securely fastened um, and make sure to the best of your ability that your athlete knows how to reattach snow their snowshoes. Okay, next slide. This is for time trials. Um, uh, if we have time trials on the operations building on Sunday, that's what this slide is pertaining to. Um, 50 meters is a straight the entire course. 100 meters is a slight uphill with a dog hill, uh, dog, dog leg to the right, just slightly at about um, probably about 75 meters. It goes slightly uphill. The 400 meter race, which is an out and back, um, you can see you know the terrain. Um, we don't have a whole lot of control. It's just the natural. Um, terrain of that operations um, pathway. Um, so this is, you know, these are the expectations if we have uh, uh, time trials at the operations building on, um, on Sunday. If for some reason we need to do time trials on Monday, we will be on the course and um, we should not have those issues at all. So for the games themselves, the 200 meter loop with a 100 meter extension for the 100 meter race. So um, any race greater than, um, 100 meters will involve um, uh, running a, a complete 200 meter loop. The only times, and we'll talk about relays in a couple of slides, the only time the start line will be on the far side, or actually the start line will never be on the far side of the track. Um, the only time your races will start on the far side is the four by 100 relays. We'll have an exchange zone on the far side. Okay, next slide. Um, no different here than at the track, um, but you know, the fact that our athletes are wearing snowshoes um, uh, may change this slightly than at the track. The finish is when the athlete's torso crosses the plane of the finish line. And the athlete must be wearing both snowshoes when crossing the finish line, um, not wearing on their hands, but wearing on their feet. For the relays, exchange zone on the four, um, our, our relays, 20 meters in length, we will, um, uh, uh, let me back up just a little bit of what I was going to say. Exchange starts when the receiving racer first touches the baton. It needs to be within the 20 meters of the exchange zone. Um, the exchange is completed when the baton is in the hand of the receiving racer. If the baton is dropped, the person who dropped it must retrieve it. This is usually the incoming racer. Um, if it's not, the, um, either way, the person who dropped it must pick it up. We cannot have a racer come in, drop it, and have the receiving uh, the next um, the next person pick it up and go with it. That's an illegal exchange, and the team will be disqualified. Uh, next slide. We will we um, we will be clear. We do this as a track as well. We will show each of the relay. Um, participants, the front of the exchange zone, the back of the exchange zone, um, and we'll, we will place your runner, we'll show him, uh, put him in the middle. If you coach him differently, if you coach a relay team so that um, you want one racer at the, at the front of the exchange zone and one at the, at the back, that's up to you. We'll put, put your athlete in the middle and then um, uh, the athlete will either stay there or move to the front or the back based on whatever you may or may not have coached. 
Next slide. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Quick note here on uh, uh, relays. Just a reminder for folks: uh, prepare if you have more than one relay team, um, and there is a even a remote chance before you even know divisioning at this point that those two relay teams could end up in a similar division together, which means they're running together. Potentially prepare to bring something to differentiate your two teams. Um, as an example, if Montgomery County has has two four by 100 traditional teams and they end up in the same division and they're all wearing those bright yellow jackets, it's hard to differentiate not only for our officials who each team is, uh, but potentially for your athletes as well. well. We'll do our best not to line them up right next to each other. Um, I will say I will have some purple Special Olympics uh, armbands that I will bring with us as an option. Um, but if you do, yep, even even it's already in here with uh, wear different colored wristbands. Um, we'll bring the purple armbands, but if you have your own wristbands that you would like your athletes to wear or that you've been training with already, um, please prepare to bring those as well. So that's all I had, Ron. Yeah, we may have some pennies in the warehouse too. Um, um... So we can check that in the next couple of days. Um, yep. But, but that's a good, good point. Okay. Um, for our relays, for competitors, if you have four, uh, fewer than four, nobody is running more than one, um, more than one leg of the relay. Um, if, you get, if you don't have four, that team may not race. Um, if you have a unified team, they can race in any order, but it does need to be made up of a unified par two unified partners and two Special Olympics athletes. Okay, next slide. Run orders. Um, so we'll have our time trials uh, on Sunday, hopefully. And we would like your run orders given to myself or Zach or Melissa or you can give them to me um, if you can't find me, uh, Zach, Melissa or Trish, so that we have those when we go back to um, the control center to do all our divisioning and to do our um, printing we want to have your defined run order for the relay um, and that will be for both um, for all your for the four by one and the four by two um, it's just a lot of hassle having to do that on the fly so we ask you um, for that we realize there are uh, medical issues that that pop up um, so except for medical scratches no changes once the competition starts if um, you do make a change request and it results in a change to your team, um, that will um, result in that team's racing for participation rate uh, ribbon only. Okay. Hey, Ron, quick note. Uh, note came in from Jackie that last year the, the guidance for the relay, um, getting things going and potentially as they were running was a little, uh, a little iffy at times. Um, I think I think that was also because it was our first year on the tubing park. Um, the year prior to that, when uh, winter games got canceled, that was the initial game plan for that. So I think we were kind of ironing things out last year, uh, and with the weather as well, we we struggled a little bit. Um, we are also looking to to make the course a little bit more visual and vertical this year. So hopefully that'll help as well for the, our our athletes and our relays. Okay, right. Um, so. In all of our, for the four by one, there's only going to be, since it's um, half, half a loop around the track, we will have exchange zones on um, uh, just opposite the, wherever we're starting. So if we're starting at, at the middle of the track on one side, the exchange zones, there'll be two exchange zones, um, two and four on the far side. So we won't be worrying about um, uh, more than two for any competition. If, it, if it's the uh, four by two, the exchange zone is just the one at the start line. Um, okay, um, here are the rules for disqualification. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, no, um, no changes to that. You can all go through that. There's no, um, uh, nothing um, has changed in, in the last several years. Um, next, which I believe is another slide on disqualifications. Um, <clears throat> same things we talked about earlier, two minute rule, three meters, 20 um, snowshoes on your feet. Um, the last one, um, please encourage, not encourage, but please have not only the coaches, we usually don't have the issue with the coaches, but um, uh, spectators, be it family members or, or friends, and sometimes it's our own volunteers, um, we'll take care of those and our marshals. 
but there is no verbal assistance as um, as they're running the race, physical assistance either. Um, so just keep in mind that um, any issues with coaching um, during the race is, is going to be a problem for your athletes. So it's not just for our coaches to look out after, but uh, family members as well. Okay, next slide. Hey, Ron, really quick, a uh, uh, question coming in from Jackie on um, relays. Um, uh, she asked, will we know Sunday the course loop, what relay positions are uphill? That should be positions one and three for the 100 meter, correct? The four by one? Oh, the, four, the only up, uphill actually is, um, some of it depend, is going to, you know, uh, depends on how they actually groom the tubing area. Um, if, you know, if everything is how we hope it would be, um, you know, it's all flat, we won't know 100% for sure on, um, we can take a look at it on Sunday when, you know, even if we're having time trials up at the operations area, our goal is to have 100% flat. Um, and, and I think it was pretty much that way last year as well. Um, yeah, there was, there was a little uphill action to it. Um, and if we get the similar setup, we will still obviously run counterclockwise. So idea, uh, well, I think at that point, the four by one would be positions one and three if there's a slight hill to it. Um, but like Ron said, ideally, we won't have that. They'll groom it as flat as possible. Um, again, that kind of depends on the weather conditions as well. Um, if there's going to be any hill, I agree, is going to be first leg and third leg. It's going to be uh, the ones that start at the start line. So they'll have a slight uphill perhaps in a slight downhill coming around the, the second 100. Um, exactly. Um, a little bit different than the track, if any of your coaches are, are athletics uh, coaches, uh, only the head coach from a delegation may file a protest, um, bring it over to the, um, to wherever we are, probably, you know, near the start line um, or in, inside the little area there. Um, you'll see the table bring over protest to myself or or Zach. And and just a reminder, Ron, too, on that that protest that needs to be filed within 30 minutes of the results uh, occurring. Yeah, um, I mean, we'll have to talk a little bit, Zach, because we're saying we're going to post the results up in the um, in the lodge, which yep. makes it a little, little bit difficult for for someone to go up to the lodge to see the results and then be back down to make sure. So. Um, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, but you're right, it is 30 minutes, but uh, we'll have to, to make some type of accommodation for getting the results available um, a little bit closer you know, in, in some manner um, down by the track in, in some way, another copy or something. Yeah, and, and if you have to run up to, if you catch it at awards or you see it up in the lodge, and you turn it in at 33 minutes, we're not going to shut down your protest. Um, you know, uh, the 30 minutes is our, our time that we'd like to stick to. Um, but again, we understand how things work um, and that you need to be in a couple different places at once at some time. So we'll, we'll be flexible with that. Um, Ron, we, we have uh, see, questions. Question. Yeah. Um, um, do you see them? Can you answer them? Um, I see Eva is about some really old lady running up a hill. I'm not sure who's refer who she's referring to. Um, <laughs> we, you know, we will do our, there's a couple of questions in terms of officials watching for impedes and um, uh, watching the exchange zones. We will do our best to have our guys do that and not have um, volunteers um, who are more day of. Um, if, if that was an issue last year that we weren't as vigilant as we could be, we will address that with our, our management team. We have a really good staff, but sometimes um, we need to, to reemphasize some of the rules and what they should be looking for. Um, so yes, we will, um, we will look for both impedes and, um, and exchange zone violations. Um, looking for any other questions, what, have, what else have I missed? Um, is there any chance that timers can tell coaches of a DQ or show a flag when a DQ occurs? Um, yes. Um, there, uh, yeah, 
actually, you know, the finish line will have a flag. We are, you know, the start line finish line officials are in communication by radio. We'll make sure, um, let's just take a note, Zach, um, yep. that when there is a DQ um, for any race, um, we'll have somebody at the finish line raise a red flag and that, that will alert all the coaches to find out what it was about. Um, Perfect. Okay, any other questions that I may have missed? I don't think so. That looks like it's it. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about the coaching during competition, Zach, or do you want me to, um, you know, it, it's fairly self-evident. There is no coaching during competition. Um, uh, coaching includes pacing your athlete and, and pacing your athlete also includes not pacing them during time trials. We need to get our athletes to be able to complete whatever distance it is that they're running at time trials on their own. Um, if, they, if they can't, um, or if someone is pacing them, um, they're gonna have to run it again until they can do it. If they're not able to complete the distance, um, they uh, will, get, will be able to um, get just a participation only as part of the competition. If they're there for time trials and can't complete it, they can run again on Monday, but just not for an award, but just for a participation ribbon. Okay, um, the, you know, the rules on coaching, um, I'm not gonna go through these, fairly self-evident. Nope. Okay, um, the consequences, um, there they are. The ultimate con consequence for the athlete is DQ and for the um, coach themselves is removal from the games. Okay. Yeah, um, this is Steve again. And the one thing I just want to hit on the coaching piece is that includes any family members, other athletes. It's not just coaches. Um, coaching with, again, like Ron was saying, with the disqualifications. So please make sure that all families are aware of that, too. We'd hate to have a family member being well-intended. But, again, no strategic guidance or whatever. Uh, it's all encouragement. You can do this. Keep going. Keep going. Good job. That type of stuff. But any instructional stuff will be a DQ regardless of who it comes from. Yeah, and one of the things we as management staff need to be um, cognizant of is making sure that our team is not doing what we're, we're asking you not to do as well. So we will be, um, we'll be instructing. I, I don't think that's an issue for much of our as much for our management team as it is our day of volunteers who want to see all our athletes do well, and sometimes they get over exuberant. So that's on us to make sure our volunteers are not doing what we're asking you not to do. Um, Ron, one last question before we I pick up and move through weather and attire here. Um, Eva asked, could we have the same flags that are used at summer games for athletics at each exchange? You mean the red and white flags? Is that the question, Eva? Yeah, I think that's it. I, I don't think that's an issue at all. No, no, no. Um, no, no problem. Yes, we will. That's an easy fix for us. Um, so moving along here through weather and attire, Again, we're checking the weather consistently. We're in communication um, with Whitetail at all times. Um, we're, we're on the phone with them almost daily. Um, so, but be prepared for all conditions. I'm a layers person. You know, once you kind of learn to, to prepare for any weather, you're good to go. Um, dress in layers. Keep your athletes hydrated. Um, I think this is one of the biggest ones with the winter sport, especially it is cold, so you think you're not losing fluids as much as you are but you're still sweating, so um, stay hydrated. We'll have those orange Gatorade water coolers out there um, with water to access. Um, wouldn't hurt to bring a reusable water bottle that you're comfortable with to refill there over and over again, but we will have cups. Um, and again, I mentioned layers as before. Um, families and spectators, we mentioned family hospitality merchandise up at the main lodge. Um, that'll be at the main lodge on Monday and Tuesday only. Um, spectator space will be designated. It is a little bit limited on the snow, um, but you should be able to see athletes from anywhere on the course. Um, interior space at the Mountain Ops building for Sunday time trials is also limited, like you know. So we recommend that parents stand off to the left of the operations building. There's a big open space there for spectators that they can stand in, um, which is the best for them. Uh, we'll mark spectator space on the snow, more than likely with a banner. Um, and if you want to bring a folding chair to sit down in, as long as there's the room to sit down and use it and you're not impeding on athletes or coaches or whomever getting where they need to be, you are more than welcome to use that chair. Um, again, Ron mentioned at one point, and I may, might have mentioned even with the schedule as well, is that coaches do have the opportunity to adjust events at time trials. 
but you do need to turn that in before time trials is over. And on top of that, a reminder is if you are changing an athlete's event and they haven't run the time trial event that goes with it, they do need to do that as well. Um, so remember those two pieces if you're going to change, um, and that stuff needs to be turned into RON before time trials is over. Um, results will be posted at the lodge, like I said, as races complete, um, and at the end of the day can be found on the coaches' resource page. Um, again, be sure for head coaches to stop at the, the snowshoe and control center table, which will be right by the, the little building that they keep the tubes in and that we announce the races out of. Um, down by the competition area each morning for any information, any updates, anything like that. Um, parking is available in the main tubing lot on Monday and Tuesday. Like Steve also mentioned, it's available in the main lot to catch the shuttle. Um, but you cannot park at the Mountain Ops area at all this weekend. That's the biggest thing. Um, a, a note just came in on uh, merchandise from Carol. Um, will they sell merchandise at the dance? They will sell it at the dance. Yep, that is our plan. Um, again, just a note on the shuttle that will be running from the snowshoeing area to the lodge and vice versa. That will happen. Um, lunch will be served at the main lodge. Um, that should stay starting at 11, I believe. Um, again, Monday the note is eat lunch before coming to snowshoeing uh, because we compete after that. And then on Tuesday, you eat lunch after snowshoeing competition and awards have wrapped up. And then at that point after lunch, you're good to go home. Um, we may need assistance every now and then uh, from delegations, some, some head coaches and stuff. Um, to, if, we, if we run into volunteer numbers, everything looks really good for volunteer numbers. Um, with Monday, Tuesday being two days that we need to operate and it not being a weekend like our traditional events, sometimes we can be a little tight. Um, so we'll reach out and we'll talk to you guys if we need a little assistance. You guys have always been really good with that, and we really appreciate that you're flexible and willing to do that. Um, families without, can families without credentials access merchandise in the dance? They cannot at the hotel. Um, there will be the family reception at the Homewood Suites that they can access. Um, but then again, they, they, they won't have merchandise at the family um, event at the Homewood Suites, but they can get merchandise Monday and Tuesday on site at the lodge. That's definitely the best place to access that. Um, just in case anybody's wondering while we're talking dance, the theme is under the sea, so if you want to dress up like the Little Mermaid or Aquaman or something fighting like that, um, please let your athletes know. Um, Steve may dress up as something fun. Who knows? It's always an adventure for, for us. Um, some other miscellaneous notes. Evaluation survey. Please, 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 if you can do it at some point after the games, um, I know we will send out e eval emails. Um, after the games, please take the survey. Um, that's the only way that we get better at what we do and providing a better experience for you and your athletes and the families. Um, last year, we got a lot of good notes, and, and that's why we made a big note for this year to make the course more vertically visual uh, because with the, the win last year, we couldn't do that, and we know it was tough on athletes figuring out where the course was and coaches. Um, again, you can complete it multiple times on the eval so that – if you want to sit down with an athlete or families want to sit down with an athlete, mom and dad can take the eval if they were there, and the athlete can do it right after them as well. Um, another note, please, please, please thank the Whitetail staff whenever you see them. Um, they're phenomenal to us. They do everything possible. If you were there for On Snow this past weekend, um, we lost the operations building, but they still made it happen. They shut down a whole trail at Falmont for us, and we got to use that for an On Snow opportunity. So please Thank them as much as you possibly can. Um, again, a reminder on the spectator walking passes, we want to hammer that in as much as possible. It's a safety thing, um, and just so people are aware, please get that spectator walking pass if you need it from the control center or the family slash merchandise area. If there's an overnight emergency, um, Mike Sarnowski and Steve Bennett will be at the Ramada Plaza with all the delegations. Um, reach out if there's a true emergency. Um, if it's something small like your room has run out of something, um, you can always reach out to the front desk. But if it's late at night and your room has run out of something, I'm sure Steve and Mike would really appreciate sleeping because they'll have to be up early. Um, so don't reach out to them if your room runs out of towels or, or toilet paper or something like that. The front desk is more than willing to help with that. Um, Delegations must check in at the control center each day. Again, we said send a head coach over to that, that snowshoeing uh, control center. 
We'll have any information and updated paperwork and anything like that for coaches. Um, if you have any unused co tickets for lunches as uh, a delegation, as a coach, as a HOD, please turn them into the control center on 1 p.m. each day. Um, bibs will be put out for Sunday for coaches and athletes and partners um, when they arrive to time trials. Those are your bibs throughout the whole weekend. Um, we're not doing multiple bibs for anything. If there's a circumstance where a bib gets ripped up or gets lost um, for some reason, we have some to replace them, um, but we do not have enough. Well, we have enough bibs, but we don't want to have to go through enough bibs to replace everybody's bibs. Um, so remember, please, when you get your bibs, hold on to them. When your athletes have their bibs, take them for the night and put them in a safe place because um, that'll be the one set for the bibs. Um, again, parking, please use the public parking areas only. Don't park at the Mountain Ops building um, for snowshoeing. Uh, food services, quick reminder, we won't go through all this, but it's a uh, buffet-style dinner for Monday, and then the rest of the meals at the ski lodge are like food court style. Um, the dance is at Ramada Plaza Monday night, so you don't have to move from dinner to the dance. It'll all be in one spot. Um, families that do not have, uh, obviously, the dance dinner ticket option for Monday are on their own for meals. Um, but if families are on site at Whitetail and looking to eat during those meals, they can purchase a dinner ticket um, or, or not purchase a dinner ticket, but you could just purchase lunch in the cafeteria area. Um, breakfast is available at the hotels for delegations. Um, and lunches, again, like I said, just like dinners at Whitetail can be purchased in the cafeteria itself. If you have any questions for um, this upcoming event, if you have questions for Alpine, reach out to Ryan Kelchner for snowshoeing, reach out to myself. Melissa Anger will be there. She'll run our control center for us. Um, and then Ron also, you can reach out for snowshoeing director stuff. Um, either him or myself will get back to you on snowshoeing as quick as we possibly can. And other than that, that's it for the night. Um, if you have any questions, please pass them in really quick. Like I mentioned, we do have to hop off to our HOD webinar. Um, so if there's any last second questions, I will try to answer them or Ron can answer them. If not, thank you everybody for everything this season. Um, I know the weather has not been super cooperative with us. Um, and I know you guys have been out doing the most training that you can. So I really appreciate and want to thank you all for all the work that you put in this season to get to this point. Um, no matter the weather, no matter the circumstance, you all put in the best for your athletes to get the best out of your athletes, and we greatly appreciate it. Um, this is going to be the last call for questions here. Ron, do you have anything that you want to add last minute? I do not. Okay. And if that's it, we are going to shut things down to, for the night. And if you are going to be on the HOD webinar, we will see you in about four and a half minutes. Have a great night, and we will see you all at Winter Games.